I am not a historian, but neither are you. So how about we, the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to us 101. And how do you guys like the new set? Going for that minimalist look. Okay, guys, the reason there's no set or anything behind me is because uh, I haven't really finished unpacking the new apartment. And on top of that, uh, this week I'm actually going to Europe for the first time. So I'm kind of putting unpacking off to the side and focusing on packing for the upcoming vacation. The fiance and I, we're gonna be going to Amsterdam, we're gonna be going to Edinburgh in Scotland, we're gonna be going to London in England, and I am gonna be out there living my best life, which is why uh, for the next two weeks following this episode, there won't, be, uh, there won't be any new episodes of US 101, which is why I encourage all of you guys to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat, all those links down below in the description box, because throughout my European vacation, I'll be posting pictures, videos for you guys to I'll be checking in with you from uh, from across the pond for sure. But I figured for this week's episode, what I wanted to do was connect one of my upcoming destinations, Britain, to American history. And yes, I've already done that quite a few times. All you have to do is watch any of the episodes uh, about the American Revolution. But for this episode, I wanted to do it while also involving the majesty of song. So I thought about it for a while. I said, what would I talk about? What would I talk about? And then I decided that what I would do today is I would tell you guys the story of how one of the most patriotic songs in the USA songbook is actually nothing more than a ripoff of the British National Anthem. You guys all know the song very well. Its title is America, but you know it by its, uh, by its alternate title, My Country, Tis of Thee. Now first, let me just play you a brief snippet of Britain's National Anthem, God Save the King, or in this case, God Save the Queen. Listen to it real quick. <laughs> All right, now here's a brief snippet of My Country, Tis of Thee. All right, you heard both of them. Did you, did you spot the difference? Did you hear the difference at all? Did you? Huh? Did? No? No, of course you didn't because they're the same song. So how did America get away with this ridiculously blatant act of plagiarism because you know today that would not fly if an artist wrote a song and then another artist came out with a song a little bit later that was the exact same song it would not happen it would not all you have to do is ask vanilla ice and queen or ask red hot chili peppers or the black keys or anybody else that's ripped off tom petty so the story begins in the mid 17th century when this particular melody just appears Supposedly out of nowhere. The reason we say supposedly out of nowhere is because the melody is actually attributed to uh, to a few different composers. No one's really exactly sure who wrote it. Some of the alleged creators of this song include English composer John Bull, French composer Jean-Baptiste Lilly, uh, British songwriter Henry Carey, and at one point I even read that uh, it may have started as a military hymn from Switzerland. But what we do know for sure is that the song first appears in 1744 in a book called Thesaurus Musicus, which was printed in England, but the song doesn't really become popular until 1745 when the song is performed at London's Drury Lane Theatre. And by now, this song had a title. It was originally called God Save Great George the King, or shorter version, God Save the King, in honor of King George II. And this particular melody became so popular that it started popping up in the songbooks and anthems of other countries. By the 1790s, this melody became the Danish national anthem. It also became the official national anthem of Britain, of Prussia, and of Liechtenstein. Now, the song doesn't make its way to North America until 1761, when it was first printed uh, in a collection of songs called Urania. And after the colonies gained their independence from Great Britain following the Revolutionary War, the song's words were changed to reflect the glory of the new nation, to glorify the young America. For example, in 1789, at George Washington's inauguration, the songs were changed to celebrate America America's first president. And as the years go on, there will be numerous Americanized versions of this song featuring lyrics that, you know, reflect a special occasion in the United States. But 
The version that we know, the My Country Tis of Thee, doesn't arrive until 1831 from the pen of Samuel Francis Smith. Now, while Smith is studying at Andover Theological Seminary, he's approached by a composer named Lowell Mason. He goes to Smith and he says, hey man, I've got these, uh, I've got these music song books that are written uh, in German. Anyway, you could translate them to, uh, to English for me, I'd appreciate it. And Smith is like, yeah, yeah, I, I got you. And as Smith is translating these German song books, one of the songs in particular uh, tickles his fancy, and it sticks in his head so much that he decides to uh, to go ahead and write lyrics to it. He gives those lyrics and the melody to Mason, and on July 4, 1831, Mason has children perform the song during a church service. That song is My Country, Tis of Thee. Now, if you're unaware of what the first verse of America or My Country, Tis of Thee is, here, here's a quick reminder. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims' pride, from every mountainside let freedom ring. I apologize for the quality of my voice. I used to sing so much better. I had a voice like an angel once. So I think it's safe to say that everybody knows the first verse of My Country, Tis of Thee. Similar to everyone, or mostly everyone, knows the first verse of the Star Spangled Banner. But, like the Star Spangled Banner, My Country, Tis of Thee, also has three more verses that none of us will ever remember. Now, originally there was a fourth verse that Smith had written for My Country, Tis of Thee, but then when he found out that kids were gonna be performing the song and it was gonna be during a church service, he decided to cut it because the lyrics were a tad too violent for children to sing. Here's a sample of them. No more shall tyrants dread above the patriot dead. No more our blood be shed by alien hands. Yeah, probably probably a good idea to go ahead and cut that part out, especially, especially if kids are singing the song, which by the way, as the years would progress, even more kids would sing this song. In fact, this song would become so popular that at one point it actually served as the unofficial anthem of the United States until the Star Spangled Banner was made the official anthem in 1931. But even though My Country Tis of Thee isn't the official anthem of the US, uh, this song has had quite a few memorable performances. One happened in 1939 on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and it was sung by famed African-American opera singer Marian Anderson. And then only 24 years later, in 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King would recite the song during his I Have a Dream speech, and then in 2009, Aretha Franklin would perform the song during Barack Obama's first presidential inauguration. And there you have it, guys. That, that's basically the story of My Country Tis of Thee. One of the most patriotic songs in the American songbook, all because ultimately, Copyright didn't exist yet. And like I said at the top of the episode, guys, some may say that yes, the United States basically ripped off Britain's national anthem and made it its own song. Some might agree with me. Others, though, might say that because of Britain's national anthem, uh, a spark of creativity was lit, and that led to a whole new form of art, a whole new art piece being created on American shores, and it birthed forth a brand new song that we can all know and see. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We, we stole the out of that song. Oh, we totally stole it. And that's it for this episode of US 101, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Really do appreciate it. And again, I do apologize for the, uh, for the lack of set. Here, hopefully, when I get back from Europe, um, I will I will address this. And again, guys, there will be no new episodes of US 101 over the next two weeks because I will be in Europe. My goal, ultimately, is to get into a pub fight with some soccer hooligans. But thanks to all of you guys that have subscribed to US 101 for liking the videos, for leaving comments, for, uh, for sharing the videos. Guys, it's because of you that this channel continues to grow, continues to spread, and I, I cannot thank you enough. I sincerely, sincerely appreciate all your guys' uh, support of the channel. As always, you can find Follow US 101 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all those links down below in the description box. Click on them, follow them, because that is where you're going to see all of the action that goes down in Europe while I am there. You guys can take the vacation with me. I will see you guys uh, when I get back from Europe, if you don't follow me on social media. If you do, you'll see me over there. So until then, I am all done. Do you think I should sing My Country Tis of Thee to one of the Queen's Guards? How would they react? Would they, would they just stand there? Or would they? Would I get bayoneted? I guess there's only going to be one way to find out. <laughs> I'll see you guys in Europe.